Hi, welcome to Photoshop CC 2021 Classroom and Book Chapter 5, which is all about quick fixes. In this chapter, we're going to actually do quite a few different types of images and learn a number of different skills that will help make your photography even better. So the first thing we're going to do is come into Bridge. And in Bridge, the first thing we're going to start with is we're going to work on this person with the red eyes. So let's make that a little bit bigger so I can show you. So we can see that before, obviously it's got some red eyes, which we've all done before. So there's no reason for you to turn in an assignment with red eyes when we can fix it so easily. So let's go ahead and grab that red eye start, do a file open with and Photoshop. And we're going to do quite a few things to this one. So let's do a file, save as. Maybe. All right, do file, save as. Make sure we're in our lesson five folder. We're going to do first initial, last name. Photoshop, classroom in a book. Let's do the underscore. Book, chapter five, and we're going to call this one red eye. All right, so as usual, we're going to say, let's look at our image and our image quality. So let's look at our image and our image size. So image, image size. We can see that this is 150. It's 5 by 6. So let's go ahead and bump it up to 300 just so we get in the habit of doing that. And our preserve details and say OK. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is zoom in on her eyes a little bit. Oh, it's zoomed in for us already. So let's go ahead and go to our red eye tool, which is under the spot healing brush. So my red eye tool. And with my red eye tool, I want to go ahead and up here at the top where it says pupil size, I want to make my pupil size 23%. I want my darken amount to be 62. And the next thing I want to do is come over here onto the person's left eye and just click. And it's going to fix that and on the right and fix it again. So all of a sudden we do not have those red eyes. So let's do a control and save. So we're gonna do a few other things to this image. So let's do a view fit on screen. We can tell this image is a little bit dark, not quite what we want. So let's go ahead and add a curves adjustment. So let's go into our adjustments. Let's come down here into curves. Curves is the third one over. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to shrink my color palette just a little bit so we can see more of curves. And I'm going to go ahead and hit auto and have it automatically do the job for me. So I've got an automatic so I can kind of see what's going to happen before and after. So if I turn it off and back on, I can see what it's done. And it does a pretty nice job. Um, I could do it a few other ways, so let's look at a few other ways to do it. Let's go ahead and reset here at the bottom. And let's go now on to the on image adjustment, which is like a finger. And we're going to go ahead and click the center of the forehead and drag up. And let it choose the tones from there. And that's, that's much better than it was before. So I'm much happier with it. Let's do a control S and save. And let's go ahead and save it as a PSD. And the, uh, the instructions tell you to flatten, but go ahead and turn in the layered file for me so I can kind of see what you had going on. All right, so now we're going to go ahead. Oh, we do need to flatten it because we have to do the next part. So let's go to Layer. Let's come down here to Flatten Image. Forgot what we had to do next. So next thing we're going to do is called Liquify, where we're going to use it to distort parts of the images. So let's go ahead and go to Filter and come down here to Liquify. And it's going to pop something open. Depending on your computer, this part may or may not work. So we want to go ahead and go onto the Face Aware Liquify. So if it's not down, make sure it's down. And let's go ahead and look at the Eyes section. And in the Eyes section, let's go ahead and enter 32 for the eye size. And let's go ahead and enter 10 for the eye height. All right. And for mouth, let's go ahead and do smile is a 5. And we want 9 for the mouth height. 
All right, so if we deselect preview, you can kind of see what's happening. Um, because this was not connected, it wasn't doing both eyes at the same time, so let's make sure those are connected. Um, otherwise, we only moved one eye at a time, so let's turn that preview on and off again. See how they get bigger and smaller. And we're pretty happy with it, so let's go ahead and say OK. So let's go ahead and do a Control S and save. And that is all we're going to do for this one. So you can see there's quite a few ways to kind of face tune um, pretty easily. So let's go ahead now and jump into our egret. So let's go back into our bridge. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I want to go ahead and grab that egret start file, open with Photoshop. Let's do a file, save as. Let's do a first initial last name, underscore Photoshop, classroom in a book, chapter five, egret. And let's go ahead and save it as a Photoshop and save. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is learn how to blur just part of the background. So if we look at our end result here, let's look at our end one. We can see that we've, you know, made he's really in focus still, but we're going to kind of blur the outsides. So let's go ahead and work on doing that. So we want to actually open this as a smart object. So we're going to go ahead and do a right click on our layers and do convert to smart object. All right, so now we've got that. Let's do a control S and save. All right, so now let's do a filter, a blur, and, and a iris blur. So let's go filter. Come down here to blur. Let's come down here to iris blur. No, let's go to the blur gallery. There we go. And iris blur. Okay. So with that, we can see we've got kind of an idea of where it's going to work. So if we look at our A, this is our center. We kind of have these outside points, which are kind of the ellipse, and then we have our feathers. So let's go ahead and drag the center pin so it's at kind of the bottom of the bird's body. So we've kind of decided where we're going to blur from. And next thing we're going to do is grab the ellipse and drag it inward to kind of tighten that focus around the bird. We're going to hold Alt or Option when we do it in order to drag each handle separately. So I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to grab this handle. Kind of drag it in so you can kind of see how you can see how his beak is getting a little bit. I'm going to come over this one. Come in a little bit. So let's go ahead and grab, that's kind of our feather handle. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So now let's go ahead and change the blur just a little bit. So let's grab that blur ring and let's go ahead and drag it to about five pixels. So we can kind of see, we can grab in this ring. So see how it lets me go up and down. So let's change it to about five pixels. And let's go ahead and say OK. In the options bar up here at the top. All right, now let's go ahead and double click on our blur gallery in our egret layer. So we've got our egret layer here. So let's go to our blur gallery up here. Oh, we want to open it again. Sorry, we want to go ahead and do it down here. Now, while we're in here, let's go ahead and adjust that blur to six pixels. Let's go ahead and change that. Just be a little bit more of a blur than it was. So you can see you can easily go back in and change things and uh, alter as you're going along. So let's go ahead and say an OK. And a Control S to save. And that's all we're basically going to do with the blurs. If you want to learn more about the blur gallery, there's a whole bunch more in the textbooks that I definitely recommend that you read. But it makes a really easy way to bring focus on one part of your image and create a really distinct look without having to do a whole lot of work. So we're going to pick up with creating a panorama in the next video. So I'll see you soon.